The plan to build an enormous railway gun was not new. During World War I, the Germans had built and used several large railway guns, including the infamous Paris gun. But what marked out the Schwerer Gustav, or Heavy Gustav, was its enormous dimensions. It was far in excess of anything seen before. The German high command asked the armaments firm Krupp to design a gun that could be used to knock out forts on the Maginot Line in France in the event of another war. Importantly, the gun had to be able to shell the forts while remaining out of range of French artillery. Krupp came up with a calibre of 80 centimetres, or 31 and a half inches. To put this in perspective, the Bismarck, Germany's future largest battleship, mounted guns of 38 centimetres calibre, or 15 inch. So the heavy Gustav would be over twice the size of the largest naval guns of the period. Its barrel would be 32 and a half metres, or 106 feet long. Throughout the 1930s and into the early 1940s, Krupp designers and engineers worked to create a functioning gun of this enormous calibre. The first test firing was on the 10th of September 1941. A series of further tests saw the gun fling a 7-ton armour-piercing shell 37,210 metres, or 23 miles. Two guns were built by Krupp. They were mounted on a specially designed chassis, supported by eight bogies on two parallel railway tracks. The first gun was free, but Krupp charged the German government 7 million Reichsmarks, about $30 million today, for the second, named Dora. A special unit was formed to crew and transport the guns, Heavy Artillery Unit E672. Heavy Gustav was sent to the Russian front and put into the siege of Sevastopol, the Soviet city was ringed by forts, and the gun would be used to reduce them one by one. But getting heavy Gustav into position was a long-winded process. Firstly, engineers had to build a special railway spur line 16 kilometers or 10 miles north of the target. At the end of the spur, the Germans constructed four semicircular tracks so Gustav could traverse and aim at each Soviet fort in turn. Then, further outer tracks were laid for the huge cranes needed to assemble the gun. Heavy Gustav arrived in early March 1942. The gun train was 25 carriages, stretching one and a half kilometres, or almost a mile in length. Assembling and moving the gun into position took 4,000 German troops five weeks to complete. The gun crew consisted of 500 men. By the 5th of June 1942, Heavy Gustav was ready to fire. It was capable of firing one 7-ton armour-piercing shell, or one 5-ton high-explosive shell, every 30 or 45 minutes, though in combat it never actually reached this rate of fire. From the 5th to the 17th of June, Heavy Gustav targeted forts and ammunition magazines, causing immense damage. Sevastopol was in ruins, as German artillery of all calibres had pummeled the city with 30,000 tonnes of munitions. Among that total were the 48 rounds fired by heavy Gustav that equated to 336 tonnes of explosives. The damage wrought by this gun was impressive. On the 6th of June, heavy Gustav targeted the Ammunition Mountain, an undersea ammunition magazine in Sevastopol's northern bay. The extraordinary store was actually 30 metres underwater and had 10 metres of concrete protecting it. Yet nine seven-ton armour-piercing shells from Heavy Gustav obliterated the magazine and also sank a Soviet warship. The giant coastal gun batteries inside the Maxim Gorky fortresses were pummeled by the Heavy Gustav on the 17th of September. Five shells were fired, knocking out Maxim Gorky 1 and damaging its sister, Maxim Gorky 2. But Heavy Gustav soon needed work. The gun barrel was worn out and replaced. The next stop for Heavy Gustav was Leningrad, now St. Petersburg, also under siege. 
The gun had just become fully operational when a proposed attack was cancelled and Heavy Gustav placed in storage for the winter. Its sister gun, Dora, was deployed close to Stalingrad but was withdrawn to avoid the Soviet encirclement of the city. Neither gun saw any further action, largely because they were so immense and obvious targets for enemy aircraft. Heavy Gustav was blown up to prevent capture by the U.S. Army on the 14th of April 1945. Its ruins were discovered 50 kilometers or just over 30 miles southwest of Chemnitz in a forest. The area fell under Red Army control and Heavy Gustav's ruins were studied by the Soviets. In the autumn of 1945, the gun was sent to Merseberg and then lost to history. Dora was blown up on the 19th of April 1945. What was left was scrapped in the 1950s in West Germany. But that's not quite the end of the story. The Germans planned an even more terrifying version of Heavy Gustav, the Langer Gustav. It was planned to set this gun, which was actually smaller in calibre at 52 centimetres or 20.5 inches, at Calais in France to target London. But instead of firing normal shells, the Langer Gustav would use long-range rocket projectiles that weighed 680 kilograms with an immense range of 190 kilometers or 118 miles. Such a weapon could have replayed the earlier blitz as it rained down high-explosive shells every few minutes on the British capital. Fortunately, this nightmare was stopped by the Royal Air Force, which bombed the gun plant at Essen several times, and the one example under construction was damaged and never finished. It can be argued that Heavy Gustav and Dora were a waste of resources in a war where such massive creations could so easily be vulnerable to air attack. They fit Hitler's demands for ever bigger machines of war, but in the final analysis their impact on the battlefield was slight in return for using up huge amounts of precious resources. Don't forget to subscribe and share. Also support my channel via PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.